Thanks for tuning in to Stampscaping 101. This is another quick scene, okay? I spend a little bit of time talking about it in this video. is about a half an hour, but I've added in this little ripped paper towel technique, and you've seen that technique used before, but I used it up here in the rays to kind of... Um, Oh, give my version of this photograph that you'll see in the beginning of this video if you choose to watch it, but I think it added a little bit of extra textures and, um, I don't know, maybe some depth from a textural standpoint within this given space, and I really like the look of it. This video for me was kind of working around the nature set number six, which includes the uh, lakeside cabin, the uh, ledge, and the pine stamp right here. Um, they're all sold individually too, but I really want, I like dark scenes where you can have a little cabin like that, interior lit, so I just kind of added all these, um, colors down here. I've left some areas lighter in here, certainly, so that when I stamped over it with the cabin, I could bring out that little light in the cabin just with simple white gel pen by putting in those little touches in there to make it look very welcoming when you have kind of a night scene with a structure there and you have this interior lit look to it by making the area around it darker. It just makes that uh, structure seem a lot more inviting. You know, you're walking around or going back home and there's that interior lit um, cabin. This one might be kind of interesting with a little kayaker or something like that. As a matter of fact, let me grab that stamp here quickly. Okay, I have my little kayaker here. We'll add, uh, we'll add them into the foreground. <laughs> It'd make for a pretty spectacular row at night, huh? We'll put them right down here. By scale, you want them a little bit more in the foreground, which means you put them a little bit lower, so it's in proportion to the uh, the cabin. There's a lot of leeway, though. You can put them higher up or lower up. There's only like a one and a half inch space there, but I wouldn't put them right, right next to the cabin, you know, but any other place would look fine. All right, so anyways, that's not nature set number six, but I had to do that. It kind of puts, you know, I don't know, you, us as a viewer or something like that in that little kayak like that, but wouldn't that be a spectacular setting to, you know, for a evening row? Mosquito free too, because it's our scene and whatnot. It could be whatever we want it to be, but uh, anyways, um, a quick scene. And this is a really easy type of technique to do. You just have to use a lot of ink, okay? And even, I went from light to dark and I layered in there and then I went back to the lighter one and I added a lot more in there you know to get that really kind of a uh, glowing appearance where it looks like the light is emanating from within the scene so you kind of keep your darker colors more kind of perimeter oriented but if you choose to watch the video again you'll see how it's done thanks for tuning into the channel hope you enjoy the scene and hope you enjoy that little twist on the technique that I use up here with a torn paper towel. All right, thanks again for watching. Okay, while I'm on this quick scene kind of kick, um, I thought I would do another one of these Aurora Borealis type of uh, scenes. This one, Aurora, the Mysterious Northern Lights book. I don't know, by Sierra Club Books here, bought years and years ago. But I want to take a look at some of these um, scenes in here, some of these photographs, and um, kind of the formation of some of these rays. I wonder really when I get these rays kind of down. I, I never really feel like I've really got them. I think I've given a, you know, pretty cool depiction of them, but I want to get some of the more kind of a nuanced um, textures that uh, you would see in the actual northern lights out there. So I want to get some of this um, kind of variation happening within the ray itself rather than just kind of having these kind of streaks coming down like that, which I do like the look of, but I want to get see if I can get some of these little um, areas in here um, not captured but uh, kind of represented. And I think I know how to do this one. I think it's just a kind of rip paper towels throughout the ray would be, look um, kind of interesting for that. So anyways, it's good to reference um, nature and photographs. You know, I haven't, can't witness them, you know, in real life unless I go out and see them, but uh, which I want to do one of these days. But um, 
photographs and whatnot are, are the next best thing and uh, let's just get into it all right so quick and easy scene it is I'm taking a look at the clock there and I'm going to try to expedite this entire process all right let's go for this kind of um, I'm gonna do this lakeside cabin in here and there's going to be some really cool thing that I do with that window in here and the reflection which I've you've seen in the previous videos if you've watched them but um, I need to keep some of this area a little bit light where I'm going to position that cabin okay so let's go for some more of kind of a kind of an explosive type of thing than just the curtain style okay and I'll try to incorporate some of those um, kind of effects that I just saw all right so kind of going more as a center of focus this is a memento pear tart I just happen to have all these pads out from the previous video, so I thought I would uh, utilize them. Not that it takes long to grab, you know, six pads right off the front of my desk here, but um, well, they're still out. All right, getting really good saturation with your lighter tones, your foundation coats, okay? and it'll make things go much much easier when you get into those darker tones. The darker tones are the ones that you know you really want to have um, the ability to kind of manipulate them in terms of um, the the blending aspect of them. You want them to really blend in really nicely. So you get that good foundation coat with your lighter tones and then the darker ones will kind of apply very um, uh, easily and uh, smoothly for you. They'll participate <laughs> with what you're trying to go for, for the most part. There's still a lot of variation that happens within this, but you won't be fighting it, you know. And that's one of the really fun things about kind of this um, whole process is just the sheer amount of variation that um, that happens from that amount of ink that you apply and then there's the uh, so there's there's a lot of control over it but yet within that control um, the variation um, occurs like for example I'll do that I could do this one same exact thing again and uh, this background look not completely different you know because it'll be the same color scheme I'm talking about if I do the same thing with the same color scheme um, but the you know the, the rays will be different um, with some inks maybe I will have applied less of a certain color and more of another and uh, you know it'll it'll I can't get the same thing twice you know which is which is the fun of it I don't like getting the same thing exactly twice either I wouldn't be going for exact replication anyway but even if I tried I could probably get something reasonably close but but not exactly though and therefore I don't even try to. And I like the surprise of it all. <laughs> I would say that sometimes there there are some color schemes that I've really kind of uh, I don't know just I wouldn't say I came up with them on the fly. I've just started applying inks, but there was some time there there was once a time I was I was really trying to replicate a certain color scheme, not immediately after, but days after, and I couldn't remember exactly what I used. Because I just kind of grabbed my pads and whatnot. And I just couldn't, for the life of me, get that same color scheme again. This was years and years and years ago. Um, that was, I wouldn't say it was frustrating, because I, you know, I knew that was the case. But um, I just, I don't know, I couldn't find that combination. It was uh, a lot of browns, and then I used blues and pinks within that um, color scheme. And it was just... Uh, I don't know, it just looked really different from what I kind of would have expected. Okay. Let's see if I can kind of get some of these um, rays uh, 
hanging a little bit more, then I'll go in with the paper towel and see what that looks like. Kinda looks very explosive though, doesn't it? With the, with this, um, I'm on blue now, and um, that's just the name of that color. It's a Marvy blue. It's the number three. I'm kind of going in certain areas instead of doing this whole perimeter type of application, okay? And I'll also be a little bit more perimeter oriented with it, you know, to get it going from uh, going from uh, something very light in the middle. Transitioning, that's what I'm, the word I'm looking for. Transitioning from very dark on the edges to, you know, certainly lighter in the middle with that, um, kind of that, um, I don't know, I guess it's a focal point. The point of, uh, kind of the emanate, emanating light. All right, here is, and that's black. This is the uh, Prussian blue. Okay, so let me try to get these rays established. I haven't really done this um, aspect of the uh, technique before with what I'm going to try to do, but we'll see how it goes. Prussian blue, as I've noted in previous videos, whenever I've used it, it's it has a slightly different consistency to it. For some reason, it it seems it's very dense in terms of the um, the vibrancy and saturation of color, but it's yet it's very watery. Where I I wouldn't say watery. It's it's the viscosity of it is thin, so it's able to penetrate the paper to get you know those darker kind of um, applications through kind of all this built up thicker ink so it's a it's a pretty good one to have in your repertoire your you know your supplies or rather if you want to get kind of that darker deep saturation I, I I guess I stamp out things with it once in a while but for the most part I use it just as a color to apply so what I'm getting at is Marvy doesn't sell pads anymore but they have blank pads and um but they also have, they just have the reinker so the reinker would be probably suffice you know in terms of um you know having some incarnation of it you don't have to have you know a blank pad with that color on there i mean it's great for convenience sake but um you can also just put a couple drops of it out on a little palette and utilize it that way Okay, so we're getting there, right? Boy, look at that. That is really explosive looking. Okay, now let me try something with this rip paper towel technique. You know, you've seen this used before. Maybe not for northern light, but... Um... Okay, let me go try to go for something fairly... Ch try to get to... It's like the art of paper towel ripping, you know? Okay, I, I want to go for something kind of really jagged looking. Um, to go along with the maybe the spirit of this piece. Okay, so right here I need to um, let me see. Let me go with the let me go with this oh, light green again. Okay. All right. I haven't done this. Maybe it'd be better if I ripped a piece of. Uh, um, Just paper instead of paper towel for this. I don't know. Let's let's see how it goes here. I was gonna say it might start soaking in too much through the you know very absorbent paper towel. Okay, that was just going on with that light green again. Let's go in with this darker green here. I think it's going to work. I hope. All right, let's go in with. The Prussian blue. Okay, let's see, like that. Kind of. 
<laughs> I don't know. It adds a, you know, another texture into it. Let me see here. Okay. Let's go with that lighter green again. It's going to have some of the blue in it. I'm just using the same pad here. Okay, like that. Kind of interesting. Let's bring it up a little bit higher. Let's see what that'll do. Okay, ooh, huh. it's kind of interesting. There's something kind of. I don't know what the word is. It's like, like a burn or something like that. One of these days, I'm going to get somewhere where you can see these lights. Alaska. Someone said Wisconsin. Someone even told me, yeah, once in a while you can see them up in Washington, which I would have thought was a little bit too low, but um, Washington State. But, uh, <clears throat> Iceland, or, you know. I think Sweden. I don't know, I've looked at photographs of these. Uh, online a lot these days. I think there was this whole documentary and IMAX movie one time. This guy that kind of studies and photographs um, northern lights, all these aurora borealis is going on. And he had this kind of like the fisheye, like super wide angle um, camera lens. It wasn't even a fisheye, it was, it was more, it was like this dome. Um, um, dome camera lens is really amazing looking. I think it was an IMAX movie. All right, how's that look? It's kind of a, it adds an extra dimension, doesn't it? All right, the paper towel thing worked fine. I, I guess, you know, a ripped piece of paper, you know, wasn't needed. Okay, so adding that in. I don't know, it's, it's more, let's call this uh, kind of an abstract um, northern light. Uh, background. <laughs> you know, kind of my rendition of it is, is probably not terribly accurate, but I, I do like the look and the texture of it, so. I wouldn't uh, want to call it a version, or I don't know, an accurate uh, depiction and uh, insult uh, nature, but um, this is just a, uh, a quick kind of rendition here of it. And awfully fun. So anyways, that's, this is, you know, I don't know, I, I, I like this look, and I, I would imagine I'll, I'll use it again, you know, with that um, kind of paper towel type of uh, effect. I, I need to work on it more and develop it, sure, but, um, you know, I mean, it's just, it's fun stuff to try to kind of come up with some sort of um, solution for some sort of um, look that you're going after, maybe. And, uh, you know, just see what kind of textures come from it. Okay, this is going in with some more of this light green. Sometimes you got to go back with lighter colors if you want to get them a little bit brighter in areas. I want to get, like, a stronger saturation, maybe. You know, so that it really glows like that photograph. It was really glowing, so see that? Going back to your lighter colors and kind of adding in 
you know, thicker saturation of it going back over the top. You're not making everything that's dark light, but you're making them look a little bit more saturated at times if you didn't apply, you know, enough of a given color to just go back in and put it right over it. There's no, there's not a point in no return. I can't make this scene lighter. You can't put light green over the top of black and have it look light green, but you know, you can certainly add kind of a, a stronger saturation um, into given areas. Okay, I haven't forgotten about the imagery that I'll be using on this, so. All right, so there we go. I mean, the, this is supposed to be a quick scene, and I think it kind of is. And I've kind of come to realize that a lot of um, the length of my videos is just simply because I haven't cared about time at all, but um, the truth is that a lot of these Scenes that I've done, I can probably have done them in half the time, but I just kind of take my sweet time, so to speak, and uh, something that could be, you know, 20 minutes of stamping or something like that become, or have become, uh, I don't know, much longer. Car so I have to figure out what um, what's up and what's down. Actually, I like that one. I, I like that going up there a little bit more. Hard to say. All right, now, I think I have enough lighter area in here. I, I'm i going to go back in and, let's see, let me add more of this green. I'm going to bring some of this green in here. And I'm going to do it right now because um, once I stamp that out, it's going to be kind of wet on there for a while. I mean, I could stamp that out and wait for, the, you know, that to dry. And then I could do what I'm doing right now, right over the top of that. But that's going to take a little bit of time to dry, so um, let's add this in right now so I don't have to apply any more inks over the top of this, like right now during, you know, during this video. I'll still leave it a little bit lighter in there, but... Boy, look at that flame like that. Does that look kind of interesting? All I did was, you know, it's just that extra paper towel kind of um, addition. Even this would be really cool. You can put a word stamp in there, you know, quote stamps. Wouldn't that be kind of cool? All right, so let's see. Boy. I think it will look pretty good, you know, whatever way I do it. So let's just pick away and just get over, get it over with. Okay, so I'm trying to figure out. I'll just have this. I'll just center it. It's going to be too centered if I just lift it as is. So I'll add in those kind of anchor stamps in terms of my foreground, and I don't know if I'll do a background in there or not. Let's see how it goes. All right, now there's a lot of ink on here, so I'm really letting that ink transfer over to the page by holding this down a little bit longer than, you know, what you would think you would have to, okay? I just want to make sure I get a good, strong impression of it. And I did re-ink my black pad fairly recently, a couple scenes ago, in other words. Okay, so that is in there. It'd be good if I can color that in a little bit too, but I'm not going to do it because that black is really um, wet right now. Okay, so let's see. Let's go ahead and use this for it. Let's use, this is going with um, nature set number six right here. These are the images that are included in that set or, you know, they're also sold individually. I'm using my wood mounted, I, I, I do think I have a like a cling foam version of this set open. So, whatever, incarnation. Okay, this is the ledge from that set, 054F, okay. So. And, where's my Versafine? 
black pad. All right, this is a quick scene. I'm supposed to have all these things really. Oh, it was buried underneath my pile of uh, paper towels next to me. Okay. All right, going with the Versafine Black here. Versafine Black is really super black, so. Although that Marvy Black, that ringed Marvy Black, is looking pretty good on there, too. foreground trees it's kind of uh, from a design standpoint these foreground trees are reiterating the trees that you see in the background you know in terms of some pines okay now I talked about this in a previous video just kind of taking and layering in some imagery in the foreground and that suddenly becomes kind of a you know more kind of involved technique, but I mean super easy. So now I've sandwiched my ledge right here amongst these trees, okay? And it just makes it a little bit more dimensional and it's, I don't know, I wouldn't call it an advanced technique, it's just simply doing a little mask like that. But that's kind of a one of those little super easy things to do um, to a given area and space within your scene that can really give it some extra dimension. All right, that looks pretty interesting. All right, now this is what I was kind of looking forward to doing here. Now this white will stand out better if I kind of ink in that um, cabin right around it there. But what I'm going to do is I made it yellow in there, but I'm going to add in a little bit of this white. I needed something that's going to be lighter than that area just so that it represents kind of light coming from within that given space and I'll kind of light up some of these rocks on the tops of the rocks you know right around that cabin so we're saying that the light coming from within the cabin is uh, influencing um, objects around it Okay, so you see that right there? But like I said, if I kind of make that area around this cabin, I would just do that with a, you know, alcohol. Pit. Let me see if that's wet still. Okay, let, let me let me try it here. I mean, I can color it with whatever. Let's try um, a really light green. You're saying green? Well, why is that? Well. It's one of those things, it's, um, the colors from, you know, the given area would be influencing the colors that are reflecting off your objects, so in this case it's a very strong green light of the northern lights. Okay, that was, that was dry enough, and alcohol pens aren't going to make, um, your, uh, dye-based inks bleed, you know, it's not going to put them back into solution or anything like that, so you can go, but I, I don't know, I, I can put a little bit of this brown on here too, so I'm just kind of mixing like that, and I want that, um, kind of that light from within the cabin to stand out a little bit more, so, you know, by the, uh, the nature of, um, contrast, um, I didn't make, you know, that white isn't any lighter than it was, but you make the area around it a little bit darker, and thus the light seems lighter now within that. And I can go in with my shadows. Now shadows, in this case, would be probably this darker green, so like this old rocks down in here, you can kind of add a little bit of shadow around them at the base of them. I do have shadows drawn into the design itself, so that kind of expedites the entire process, but you can kind of hit it again with a little bit of a detailing like this. Maybe not, it's doing little details like this isn't in the spirit of uh, 
a quick scene. I can do this much quicker without these little things, but I mean, these little types of marks like this do not take a lot of time, you know, so. Anyway, so you can see that cabin right there, but doesn't that, doesn't that really stand out now in terms of the uh, lighting in here? When you have kind of an interior lit something too, it's, it's just very inviting. Okay, let's go with a couple of different um, colors right here like I did in the previous um, Northern Lights scene. Put a couple little stars in here. Now, I don't know if we'd be able to see these like this on a Northern Lights, but you would certainly be able to see it with, you know, kind of a time exposure, you know, photography. I'll put some down here in the water. So it might be reflecting the colors of the sky. I mean, not the colors, but the, you know, the textures of the sky. So we have, you know, um, green stars up here. You know, just they're dim, you know, more... Uh, not as uh, vibrant. Maybe they're farther off or whatever. We have white ones going up there. I'll put white ones down here. And here's the yellow. Yellow is kind of used in well, it's, I don't know, a certain aspect of green. It kind of looks yellow in there, but uh, that was the lime green color, the light green Marvy. Okay, but look at that. That is really fun. So a little bit of a kind of twist on those northern lights by putting in those extra little textures like that. I do like the look. It, there's something kind of watercolory look, you know, about that or, or something kind of amorphic looking there. So I'm trying to, I don't know, work on my northern lights rays and whatnot and how to kind of add a little bit of extra texture to them. This is the one, previous one right here. I like that look too. Look at this. See, I didn't just spray this one right here. This one, this one will get this vibrant if I just spray seal it. Okay. It'll bring back the vibrancy, but um, look at the shape of that. A little bit different here with that kind of more explosive type of like flared um, look than the hanging curtains one. Okay, so anyways, another quick scene. Hope you enjoyed it. Certainly fun to do, and uh, I don't know, I've kind of expanded my Northern Lights, um, I don't know, process by adding in a something that doesn't take too long, you know, just ripping a paper towel <clears throat> and kind of adding, I'm trying to get that texture out of there, adding that into the mix. And uh, I don't know, I need to work on it, still playing around with it, um, but certainly fun to do. And uh, I don't know, it kind of adds that kind of deeper layered um, space to it, I think. So, Thanks so much, as always, for tuning into the channel. And checking out new Northern Lights. <laughs> All right.